Good morning and welcome to our online service. My name's Ray and I'm a member here at Cornerstone. And at Cornerstone, our intention is to be an authentic Christian community serving Christ's purposes in Bristol, Britain and beyond. In our service this morning, we're going to be hearing from Alex, who's going to be continuing uh, his exploration of 2 Corinthians. And today he's going to be doing the second part of a study on Paul defending his apostleship. Pauline's going to be reading for us. But before we begin, we're going to be having um, a clip from Claire, who has some roles within the church that she'd like to uh, share with us. Um, there's lots of exciting things happening as we kind of think about coming out of lockdown. Teams are starting, teams are growing. And um, yeah, it's just a really brilliant opportunity, lots of opportunities uh, to serve within Cornerstone Church. So in a minute, have a listen to Claire's video. And if that's something that you think you might be interested in hearing more about, then do get in touch with Claire or myself and we can let you know more. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that we can gather this morning, whether it be at uh, our building or here online. We thank you that we are one in spirit, Lord. We are one body and we belong to you. And Father, I pray for all those who are uh, watching this service or who are in the building. Uh, I pray, Lord, that you will uh, speak to each and every one of us with whatever message you need us to hear today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hello there. If you've been watching for the last couple of weeks, you'll know I'm Claire and I'm the Children's Church Coordinator. And we've been looking at different ways you can serve on teams. Uh, the first week we did uh, the preschoolers and the midweek family group uh, that's starting in June and the toddler church that's hopefully starting in September. And uh, last week we looked at children's church uh, and all that they're able to do. Great team. Uh, and this week we're looking at youth. So some of those children that were in children's church have now gone to senior school and um, they'll be experiencing smartphones and lots of new friends and different uh, social opportunities uh, and all that comes with senior school. Um, so uh, quite understandably we need a, a new group with them and already we've got brilliant team. Uh, so we have um, uh, Larry and Candice and uh, Laura Quaver and Mems, for those that know them. Uh, um, they'll, they'll be taking two weeks, uh, two pairs for two weeks uh, per month. And obviously we have the family service, that's the third week. So we have one week a month that's not covered. So if you would love to, we're going to start with Alpha, with them, so that they can ask all the questions they want. Um, and the Youth Alpha has done them really well. So we're starting off with that. Uh, and then uh, we'll be taking them further. So they like, love discussions, they love to eat, uh, they love games, all those things that come with youth. Um, if you feel that you would be interested in joining the team, could you get in touch with Ray on the link below uh, or to me directly? Um, we'd love to hear from you.
from 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Now I, Paul, myself, am pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am lowly among you, but being absent am bold toward you. But I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do you look at things according to the outward appearance? If anyone is convinced in himself that he is Christ's, let him again consider this in himself, that just as he is Christ's, even so we are Christ's. For even if I should boast somewhat more about our authority, which the Lord gave us for edification and not for your destruction, I shall not be ashamed, lest I, seem to tes lest I seem to terrify you by letters. For his letters, they say, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech is contemptible. Let such a person consider this, that what we are in word by letters, when we are absent, such we will also be indeed when we are present. For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who command themselves. But they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. We, however, will not boast beyond measure, but within the limits of the sphere which God appointed us, as, as a sphere which especially includes you. For we are not overextending ourselves, as though our authority did not extend to you, for it was to you that we came with the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things beyond measure, that is in other men's labours, but having hope that as your faith is increased, we shall be greatly enlarged by you in our sphere, to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, and not to boast in another man's sphere of accomplishment. But he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. For not he who commends himself is approved, but whom the Lord commands. Good morning, church. Greetings to you in Jesus' name. I hope you're all keeping well. As you're aware, our in-person services have begun and they are well attended. However, there are a few people who can't attend because of personal circumstance. Therefore, we're keeping the online presence going for a bit longer. If you're joining from home, uh, welcome and God bless you and keep you. Shall we pray? Father God, we love you and adore you. We bow down before you. We declare that you are our God and we are your people. Lord, previously we couldn't have come and addressed you as our Heavenly Father. But we thank you for making it possible by including us 
in your family, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for our sins. And you were buried. And on the third day, he rose again, all in accordance with Scripture. Lord, we thank you that you showed yourself by many infallible proofs to your disciples. And then you ascended into heaven. You gave instructions before you did. And then you are today interceding for us. You're preparing a place for us. And in the future, you're coming back for us and to judge the world. And we want to say a big thank you for pouring out the Holy Spirit on your church in the meantime. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you constantly remind us that we are the purchased possession of God, that we belong to God. We thank you that you open our eyes of understanding each time we engage with Scripture. This morning, our prayer is, Lord, open the eyes of our understanding, even as we engage with Scripture, so that we might know God more. We might love him deeper, serve him faithfully, serve him better. We ask this in Jesus' name for his glory and for our benefit. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, Pauline, for reading 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10. Uh, so far in this letter, Apostle Paul has been defending his ministry and, his, and he gives some instructions about giving and then he goes on to defend his apostleship against some false teachers who weaved their way into the Corinthian church in his absence and uh, tried to post themselves as super apostles and tried to discredit Paul as a person, his ministry. And Paul is concerned if they do that, they will discredit his message, which he brought the message of the gospel uh, to them in the first place. Um, so in chapters uh, 1 to 7, we see that Paul defends his ministry. In chapters 8 and 9, we see Paul uh, giving instructions with regard to collection, particularly the famine relief fund uh, to alleviate economic difficulty in the mother church in Jerusalem. In chapters 10 to 13, uh, Paul defends his apostleship. And in Christian ministry, if you ever serve Christ, you'll find that uh, Criticism comes without invitation. Uh, people often express their opinions uh, freely. Um, some of these criticisms might be valid criticisms or we call it as constructive criticisms. If that is the case, they take, take it on board and uh, make necessary amendments so that we can serve them more effectively. What if the criticism is malicious and uh, is, is uh, pointed in a way that it's trying to tear you down and bring you down. In such cases, what should our reaction be? Should we curl up in a bowl and let people just walk over you? Or should we retaliate like the world does? Uh, what is the right course of action? In chapters 10 to 13, we will see what is the right way to go about defending us. Paul does not curl up in a bowl and let people walk over him. Neither does he retaliate like the world does. Instead, he defends his ministry with the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Um, last week, we took that word C-O-W. C for cowardly, O uh, for outwardly, and W for worldly. And uh, we looked at that. They accused that Paul was cowardly because they said when he writes letters, his letters come across as very tough, but in person, he's not that. Uh, so Paul is saying he's had a good reason as to why he was tough in the letters. He was hoping that his letters will do the necessary task in bringing about the correction in the Corinthian church. So that when he comes in person, he doesn't have to be tough. But he's prepared to be tough uh, on people who have not received that correction. Outwardly, uh, people are looking at things outwardly. Uh, Paul is saying this is not a in earthly battle. This is of a, a battle of, which is of a spiritual nature. Therefore, he chooses his spiritual weapons. That brings us to W, worldly. Uh, he's not going to attack uh, in a worldly manner. He's saying he's going to bring down every high thing, every pretension that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. He's going to bring them down and make them subject to Christ. And uh, it's a spiritual battle, and his choice of weapons are spiritual. Okay. 
Uh, in, in, chapter, in these verses 1 to 12, we looked at last time, uh, Paul corrected their perspective. In verses 1 to 7, he says that uh, if people, those who say belong to Christ, must recognize that we belong to Christ as much as they do. He clarified their motives. He said, I'm, I'm not trying to frighten you uh, with my letters. My aim actually is to build you up. Uh, that's what he's aiming for. And he also confesses authenticity. And uh, he was genuine. Uh, he was not a person who was trying to hide his weakness or as a person. Uh, but you'd find that uh, uh, Paul was a genuine in his approach, his ministry uh, and service. Okay. Uh, previously, people had accused him of being two-faced and actually saying, I am not two-faced. I'm prepared to stand by my word. Okay. Um, today in chapter uh, 10, verses uh, 12 to 18, uh, Paul is communicating some facts. And the uh, first thing he's saying is he's not going to compare himself with others. Uh, comparison is a, sometimes a dangerous thing because it can make you feel elated or deflated depending on whom you're comparing yourself with. If you're comparing yourself with people who are really better than you, you can feel deflated. If you're comparing yourself with people who are uh, not uh, as good as you, then you can feel elated. But that's not how you should go about. Uh, you need to get your commendation uh, from God. You can see that in verses uh, 12 uh, to 14. And um, he was working uh, within the responsibility that God had entrusted. When criticism comes, it's important for us to be secure in your call. You got to know who you are uh, in Christ Jesus. You need to know who called you and what your task is and stay true to the task and not look to the left or to the right, but to be focused and look to Jesus and run the race and be a faithful steward. Okay. In verses 15 to 16, we see uh, people in, in Corinth were trying to take, particularly the false teachers were trying to take credit uh, on someone else's work. Paul is saying, I'm not like that. I don't uh, like to build on other people's foundation. I like to, uh, I don't take credit uh, for work other people have done. Haven't we seen, even in, even in Christendom, uh, when we have an answered prayer, uh, people are quick to take credit. It's my prayer. It's my prayer. Or oh, something happens. It's we did it. I did it. No, no, no. It's not I. It's uh, we. It's important to remember uh, that you only take credit for those things that you can take credit. But in reality, all credit needs to go to Christ. And that's so important. It, it in the grand scheme of things, it is the Lord working with us. It's not... Uh, uh, God is an add-on. No, we are working with God and God is working with us. If not, our ministry will be completely uh, unfruitful. Um, and Paul is like one of these people who is like a parent. A parent loves to see his children succeed and uh, even outdo them. Uh, that is uh, how normally parents are. And uh, if we have a kingdom mindset, then you will rejoice at the success of other people. And... Uh, you will not uh, 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 try to badmouth them or be jealous or slander them and things like that. So uh, Paul in this uh, in verses 15 to 15 and 16, um, uh, he is saying a couple of things here. He, we, we hope as your faith increases, our area of influence among you will greatly increase as well. He is, uh, enjoying their success. Uh, when you guys go and do really well, it makes me happy because I am uh, I am part and parcel of you as much as you are part and parcel of me. So if I do well, you you also enjoy that. Okay. Um, and uh, he wants to this gospel to go forward. So if uh, the Corinthian church uh, is their sphere of influence is moving out and. Uh, the gospel is spreading. Uh, it is uh, 
it is great gain for Paul. Now looking at the last two verses, uh, he's talking about boasting. He's saying if, if one boasts, they need to boast in the Lord. He's actually citing Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches, but let him who boasts boast in this, that he understand and he knows me, that is no God, that I am uh, that I am the Lord and practices steadfast love, justice and righteousness in the earth. So Apostle Paul is saying, he who boasts must boast in the Lord and not in their own uh, strengths or abilities, but all the glory needs to go to him. And he's saying, get your commendation not from people, but get your commendation uh, from God. So in concluding this uh, morning's message, I want to say to you, uh, when uh, you will find uh, times when you'll be criticized, if the criticism is constructive, take it on board, make the necessary changes. If it is malicious, don't curl up in a ball and let people walk over you. Don't retaliate like the world, but defend yourself with the gentleness and meekness of Christ. That is only possible when you know who called you and who you are in Christ Jesus. And then uh, serve faithfully. And when you serve faithfully, remember your commendation doesn't come from people, but from God. Rejoice in other people's uh, successes because uh, if other people succeed, you are part and parcel of them. And you can uh, you, you, the, get, get, have that kingdom mindset. Let the gospel spread. Let the kingdom expand. So that is what, with those thoughts, uh, I would say, uh, let us pray. Uh, Father God, we sometimes have faced criticism. Sometimes we have probably curled up in a ball and let people walk all over us. Uh, sometimes we have retali retaliated. We are sorry, Lord, for wrong responses. Sometimes we have tried to be uh, worldly in our response, but we are saying uh, we want to defend ourselves with the gentleness and meekness of Christ. Help us to remember uh, who called us and whose we are and whom we are serving. And we ask, Lord, when we see uh, our friends whom we have inputted into, uh, they are, their sphere of influence is growing, help us to rejoice in the fact that the, the, our influence is growing because the gospel is going forth. And we ask, Lord, uh, sorry for the times we have boasted in our own strength or ability or richness or things like that, or our giftings, but help us to remember, Lord, our boasting should just be only in you. And we ask that we will not compare ourselves with other people. Uh, instead, we will take our commendation just from you. And we look forward to the day when you return and when you say to each one of us, well done, good and faithful servant. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, God bless you and keep you. Uh, next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, so look forward to uh, being with you. Probably bring a message on the Pent Pentecost. Have a lovely week.
thank you, Alex, for your message and your reminder to us that we must seek our commendation from God and not from people. In terms of notices, just another reminder um, about the message that Claire brought us at the start of our service. Uh, we need you. We need people to uh, serve on these teams that are kind of rolling out over the next few weeks. Um, so, yeah, if you would like to know more, please do get in touch. and We'd love to uh, tell you more about the different roles and what's involved. I'm not going to give any more notices now, but I would like to uh, close in prayer and I would like us to spend some time particularly praying for the situation uh, everywhere in terms of um, COVID, but particularly uh, in India at the moment. So will you pray with me? Father God, we thank you that we can come to you in prayer. Father, when things seem overwhelming and too big for us to comprehend or manage or cope with, we thank you that we can come to you. Father, we come to you this morning and we particularly want to remember our brothers and sisters in India. And I know some of those brothers and sisters uh, may well be watching this service this morning. And Father, we want to stand with them and we want to pray for them, Father, uh, for the COVID situation in India, Lord. For the desperate need for aid to get to the right places at the right prices. Lord, we just lift it to you. We lift everybody who's affected, be it firsthand by suffering from COVID or by losing uh, family members, friends, breadwinners. Lord, we lift them to you. And we stand with them, Father. Lord, please, will you help? Have your way here, Father, we pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. I hope you have a really good week and look forward to uh, speaking to you, greeting you again next weekend.